Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom dashboard in Google Analytics. You'll find your custom dashboards, or all your dashboards, are located here behind, behind the Home tab in Google Analytics. What we have here is an example of one which I'm going to build now, showing all the abandoned rate, rates from the different stages of your checkout, stage by stage. When I'm doing this kind of work, I find it really, really handy to plan out what I'm doing in advance. Uh, I've got a mind map here, which I'll just click over to, which shows what I mean. In this example, I've got all the stages from a Magento one-page checkout set out, and I've got a list here of all the different slots that I've got available for goals in Google Analytics. So I can use my mind map to plan out exactly what's going where, like this. A pause and then I'll sort the rest of them out. There you go. A couple of points I should make about this. One is that I always find it handy to try and keep the uh, amount of space down to a minimum. Uh, so I've used things like the greater than symbol to say going from cart to checkout. I also think it's really handy to always include a reference in the description to the number of the goal, in this case G11 because in some places Google Analytics shows you the full name and in others it just refers to the goal by the number. So having both combined in the description at the moment is a handy tip that makes it much, much easier to work when you're setting up the funnels, as I will show you. Okay, to set up a dashboard, we've got to click on the left and this home tab here up at the top to take us over to uh, where our dashboards can be found and then we go down here on the left hand menu and click for a new dashboard. We're going to create a blank one uh, because we, we're going to build this by hand. The starter a dashboard is an option which provides you with a load of um, starter widgets. Let me just call this, what are we going to call this? There you go. And click create dashboard. Okay, the we get a choice of various types of metric. Um, in this case, we'd want to go with the standard default, which is the one that produces an overall metric with a nice little spark line. Now remember, we knew, we made a note of what it was we were interested in. It's goal 11 is the first one that we chose. Always use search on Google Analytics. It's by far and away the quickest way of finding things. So it's goal 11, there are all the different metrics that we want, and it's goal 11 abandonment rate that we're interested in. And then we can pop back over to the mind map and copy, if I am lucky, the name that I have carefully prepared. And paste in, and quickly we paste in the name that I've copied from my mind map into the title. I also tend to call these things like micro funnel. I identify those so we can see in any of the report listings what this is all about. You can, indeed you should, later on work out which report you would like this widget on the dashboard to link through to. But at this, at this point, I'm saying let's just do the basics. Let's get the thing set up. Click Save. And there we go. There's our first micro funnel. Uh, as you saw, there are a whole load of these to do. So I'm just going to hit pause again and then come back when I've added them all in. Right, I've added all my widgets. One of the other problems here, of course, as you can see these, I don't know if you can spot this, but is that these are all in the wrong order. It adds the new ones onto the top of the list. So you need to do a load of dragging and dropping in order to, oops, that won't work. Let's do it the other way around, scroll down and drag up. So gradually we have to uh, sort those out and get them into order. I will pause again while I do that. OK, we've done that. Now, the next thing I would like to do is to be able to assess the performance of different sources and mediums bringing me traffic uh, in terms of the checkout abandonment rate. For that, we need to have a slightly different type of widget. I want to be able to see a whole load of information about different things. So this is I'm going to use a table widget for this. Uh, this one's going to show us just 10 rows. That'll be fine. The source, I think I'll go for you know, the standard source medium as the dimension. Now, here's an important point. 
if I just went straight ahead and showed the abandonment rate for the whole checkout, top of the list would be something with a 100% abandonment rate, which had actually only brought me two visits. The trick here is to start by displaying a metric which shows the number of people who started the checkout. So we'll have only those that were sources that bring a lot of people to start the checkout showing at the top of the list. And we can do this because there's a handy metric for doing it, which is called goal, one, goal whatever it is. In this case, goal one starts. So we start typing. And look down there, we've got it, goal one starts. Stick that in there, and now we can move on and show the metric that we're interested in, which is the goal one abandonment rate in this, the abandonment rate according to these sources and mediums uh, with the most traffic and showing their relative abandonment rates, which is inf useful information to have. And we need to sort out the name again. Okay, there's the name, basket to complete, abandoned by source. Hit save. And again, unfortunately, it's going to stick it into the default position up the top there. But we can drag it sideways, I hope, and it will sort itself out. Super. So we can now, at a glance, we can look down these columns and we would see in the actual data the level of the different volumes of visits which started the checkout from these different sources and mediums and can be able to get an instant understanding of their relative likelihood of them to abandon the checkout at that point. Finally, I'll try and add one extra type of widget, which is a bit iffy in the terms of the way it presents and visualizes the, the information because it's going to involve a dual access. But I'll show you what I mean. What I'm going to do now is add a different type of widget, which is a timeline, which will allow us to compare two different metrics. Right, the overall goal one abandonment rate. That's the overall checkout journey, which will of course be expressed in a percentage. And I want to get an idea of how whether this is affected or correlates in any way with the volume of people starting to check out, i.e. is it when the checkout gets super busy that we have a problem? Right, we've put in a new name for it, checkout abandonment rate versus starts. Hit save. Okay, and there we are. It's added and I've dragged it over. The problem here is that you've got a dual axis. So we've got numbers of starts there and percentage rate for abandons there, uh, the heavier line. So we can see there isn't really any, in this example, uh, the busyness of the checkout doesn't appear to have any impact on the abandonment rate at all. But that would be a classic example of where you might spot that, oh my goodness, when the checkout's busy, the abandonment rate goes up. Uh, that would be a very interesting thing to watch. For now, I think that about wraps it up. This is a very, very useful way, I think, of keeping an eye on uh, what's going on on your checkout.